Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to go over um, the roof command and how to use it within Revit. And we're going to do three different types of roofs. Um, we're going to start off with maybe the simplest one, which is just a hip roof. We'll go ahead and explore kind of a gable style roof, and then we'll end it off with a flat roof. Okay. Right now, what I did is just created, um, it's actually one floor plan, just copied, copied it three times. It's set to, it's set to, let's get some color in there. So it's set to the finished floor and it goes all the way up to level roof. So you can see it's just um, a set of exterior walls. Okay. So I'm going to start off by going into the roof plan. So we create roofs on the roof level. So that would mean that I come over here and we have um, under the floor plans tab, we have a roof plan. Uh, when we get into the roof plan, I see nothing, right? Now remember where plans are being cut from. Remember that plans are cut four feet above the finish, level, um, finish floor. So if I'm in the roof plan, that means I'm four feet above. So of course I'm not going to see anything because we haven't created anything just yet. So this is an, a situation where we would really benefit from seeing the underlay. So pulling in um, the view from a different layer. So I'm going to go to the properties box. I'm going to scroll about halfway down and it says underlay. Range base, I'm going to set that to second floor because I want to see the second floor below. So I'll hit apply. And there we have it. Okay. Now we remember that with underlays, we simply, um, we could see them, but we can't select anything. Okay, so they're just kind of, it's just kind of ghosted in. Um, there's nothing really there, okay? So let's zoom in over here. <clears throat> We're going to go in and select roof. I'm going to click roof, and just like everything else, uh, well, first, you'll notice that it took us into sketch mode, okay? but we're going to go inside here in the properties box and select a roof type. So we have three different um, generic roofs, 9 inch, 12, and 12 inch filled. And then we have the Wood Raptor 8, 10, and 12 inch. Um, so this is the thickness of, or this is kind of a 2 by 8, um, 2 by 10, and 2 by 12 Wood Raptor. We're going to go ahead and stick to just the Wood Raptor 10 inch. Okay. <clears throat> now, similar to the roof, I'm sorry, similar to the walls, we can go into edit type and we could check out the actual structure and see what is inside um, or how this roof is constructed. Okay. But we're not going to go inside there. Um, and that's, well, no, let's go down to raptor cut. Okay. Actually, no, let's hold off on this one for, for this one um, example so that you could see what happens if we just leave it to the um, default setting. Okay. So what I'm going to do is select the pick wall. So this is a situation where the pick walls is going to be come in really handy. Okay. And before we start clicking, we're going to come up here. We have a box that says define slope. So let's leave that checked for right now. We have an overhang. I'm going to change this overhang to two feet. Oh, not one foot, two. Just change that to two feet. And then we're going to click on extend to wall core. Okay. The extend to wall core is in, in the previous um in the previous lecture, I covered roofs and how that roof is sloping off of um the core, right? Off of that stud where the rafter and the stud meet, okay? So because of that, we wanna make sure that um, the roof is extended into the actual core of the wall. So that's why we have that check. Talked about overhangs. Define slope means that we get to define the actual slope. When we create roofs and when we go into the gable roof, there's gonna be situations where we don't define slope and then Revit will generate a roof based off of the slopes you do define. And then the slopes that you don't define 
those um, Revit will will kind of readjust um, based off of the other the other slopes you do add. So what I'm going to do is click on a wall. Notice again the placement of my cursor. So if I'm kind of on the inside, then it's going to place. You see the the um the dashed line. That is the two foot overhang. Okay. So we want the two foot overhang on that side. So I'm going to click once. And here it gives me the a ratio of 12, but this is a a 912. So this roof is set to a 912 roof slope, which is very steep. I could do one or two things. Um I recommend so this first one, we'll go ahead and click inside there and just delete the number nine and add the number three. Okay. But moving forward, I would scroll about halfway down. And we're going to change this. Oh, it's already set. I take that back. So it's already um, by changing the 312, the first one of the three to a 312, it's changed the, uh, the settings. So we're going to go. No, I take that back. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work. OK, well, in that case, I'm going to just keep going with the 912. We'll click over here, click there, click there, and click there. OK. I'll hit the escape key once just to get out. Actually, let's do it twice to get out of adding um, the boundary lines. What I'm going to do is select, do a multiple selection. So I'm going to hold down the control key. And I'm going to select all of these lines, except this one, because we already know that that one is set to a 312. And then I'm going to change the slope right here. I'll just hit apply. Okay. So now we have all the slopes set correctly to a 312 um, slope. Now what's going to happen is that it's going to generate a roof based off of each of these um, each each of these lines. By us adding a line along a wall, it means that it's going to create a slope surface with the tail or the lower side along on the bottom or say along on the wall and then it's going to slope upward so now i'm going to hit the check mark because we're all done and there we have it it just created a roof just like that let's go ahead and take a look that i'm going to select it so we could orbit around it oops so we could see that um that it has a two foot overhang right and it just generated the, the uh, roof slopes. Let's cut a section because I want to take a look at the construction aspect of it. Oops. So we're going to cut a section. And we're going to go to Fine and Shade it. OK. <clears throat> I'm going to click on the roof so that it pulls up the properties. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. It created the roof slope, but it created it on the back side of the um of the core. So we're gonna come down here. And the reason why I did that is because the construction is set to a truss. So I'm gonna click here and change this to a rafter and I'll hit apply. And there we go. I went ahead and I moved it down because this is a rafter construction. Okay. Now in this situation, we could leave the construction type the rafter cut to a two cut plumb. So there's one cut, there's the second cut. Okay, and that's what this is referring to. We can leave it as a plumb cut, which straightened this line, all right? And then we could also leave it as, I think it's a plumb cut, two cut square. So let's take a look at that. So this kind of angled it, all right? You see this line there? So it's, the the uh, rafter cut is is referring to kind of this side um, to the eaves of the roof. Okay, so we can go ahead and leave that however you want. I'm going to leave it just as a plumb cut. So that means that when we create the roofs, we have to make sure that we adjust the rafter cut and we um, change from a rafter to a truss. Now, like this example. You could do that after the facts, or we could actually preset that before we actually even start the um, creating the roof. 
So let's do that the second time around. This time we're going to go ahead and create a gable roof. Now, I actually don't know how many examples or how many different kind of roof styles there are. Um, there's quite a bit. Um, and some are much more, have different characteristics. But the two most common types are going to be a hip roof and a gable roof. And a gable roof essentially means that, well, we'll see. It essentially means that one side of the wall goes straight up, okay? So we might have an angle or a slope from this side, and then this side also slopes, but this side is goes straight up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do two straight gables right on this side, um, one along that wall and one along this wall. So this is a situation where we would say, no, we don't want a slope along this wall, okay? We don't want the the uh, roof portion sloping anywhere, inward. We just don't want any slope. So we're going to not define a slope here. So I'm going to start off again. Define slope, overhang two feet, extend to wall core. We're going to adjust the rafter cut to just a plumb cut. I'm going to scroll down. Oh, you know what? It doesn't give me the option for rafter or truss. So that means we're going to have to make that change afterwards. OK, just keep that in mind. We'll hit Apply. And again, I'll go ahead and click on the outside here. And we'll leave it at a 912. And there, there, and there. Okay. Now I said that these two I don't want to slope. So that's when I'm going to deselect Define Slope. I'm going to say there and there. Okay. Now you'll notice that this magenta line, these two magenta lines, don't have that slope angle or that slope um, icon right there and right there. Okay, because it doesn't have a slope. <clears throat> if we wanted to, here, let me hit the escape key twice to get out. If we wanted to change our mind, we can always select that magenta line and say, you know what, I do want to define a slope along that one. Right, or if we wanted to change a couple of these, we can do that as well. So just click the line and then click the define slope box. Okay, so I'm going to change the slope here. Control here. The previous slope was a 312, so let's make this a 412 just for fun. I'll hit apply, and that's it. We're just going to hit the check mark, and now let's go and take a look. And that's right over here. Oops. So the gable is this. All right. This is what we refer to as a gable, as a gable roof. So this wall should go all the way up. Um, and this portion of the wall has no roof slope sloping inward. Okay. Now we can go ahead and select the roof. We're not done yet because obviously we have a big hole right inside there. So we're going to have to fix that. But before we fix that, let's go back and change this, the uh, construction type. Now I could click on it and make these changes because I'm comfortable and I'm, I know the difference of what, it, what I want and what it looks like. But let's go ahead and just move this over here. So we could study that a bit more. OK, so here we're going to select that. We want to change this to, notice now I have the option, to Raptor. That's the key part, OK, is to change that to Raptor so that it comes down and it's on the inside of the, um, the wall core. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as a plumb cut. And that's it. Let's go to the 3D view. OK, how do we fix? this portion of the wall. Well, luckily, we have a really nice tool. I could click on the wall that I want to adjust. And I don't do anything. I simply come up to the top here, and it says Attach Top Base. So that means I'm going to attach the top of my wall to the base of an object, in this case, the base of the root. So I'll go ahead and click there. And all it's going to ask me is, well, what do you want to attach it to? So then I'll click on the roof. And there you go.
that simple. We'll do the same thing over here to this wall. So I'll click on the wall, attach top base, and click on the roof. And we're done. All right, so now we have a gable roof. Over here, these are hip roofs. Let's talk about the flat roof. Now the flat roof is a little bit different. It's a little bit trickier because it doesn't follow the regular slope path. Okay? And if we're not careful with it, um, we could kind of run into some problems. So let's let's start off by creating the most common problem, and that is kind of picking the wrong angle um, to slope. So let's or the wrong side to slope. So let's go to the roof plan. Now, let's go to roof. Oh, this is pretty much preset, two feet, extend to wall core. We're gonna hit define slope, okay. So, let's start off with the simplest way, okay? That's what we'll do. We'll, talk, we'll start off with the simplest way of creating a flat roof. Then we'll go into some of the most common problems or the most common problem and how to resolve that problem, okay? So the first way, right, the, the way I would go about creating a roof is, or a flat roof is by selecting the longest wall that has no indentations, right? This is a jog or a cut. I'm going to start on the other side here. I'm still going to want that two foot overhang. And I'm going to click right there. Okay. Now this wall is going to be the only wall that has a slope because that's what we want. We want this to slope upward. Remember that the magenta line refers to the bottom part of the slope. So if I'm clicking on this wall and I have a magenta line, that means that I'm going to have the bottom or I'm going to have an overhang in the bottom of the of the slope down here, and it's going to slope upward from this magenta line. So that means that I'm going to have a flat roof that slopes from here going downward, okay, or from here going upward, however you want to call it. But it really means that none of these on the none of these walls should have a defined slope because we don't want any sloped roof or sloped surfaces coming from any of these sides. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect defined slope, and then I'll just go ahead and click. Now I'll go ahead and hit the escape key twice, select this magenta line, and I'll go in and change the slope. I'm going to highlight the entire ratio there, and I'm just going to type in 2% apply, okay? And that changes that to 0, 012, and then it changes and it gives me a fraction over here. And then once I'm done, I'll just hit the check mark, and there is our sloped roof. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. There we have it. So there's the, the roof. Let's go ahead and cut a section through it. This time we're gonna cut it vertically. And I'm actually just gonna flip that section. Okay. So you could see that it does have an angle there. Let's change this. Now this is a situation if we went back to the 3D view. This is where I would select the wall and hit attach top base and then the bottom of that wall right there. All right. I'm going to go to the section they're touching. Now here's one an issue. So let's go ahead and click on this. We're going to change this to a rafter. Okay. And now you can see that it kind of slopes in there. It's hard to tell, but if you don't change, make that change, right, it's right there. It, um, well, yeah, it's on the backside of the wall core. I'm going to change that to the rafter. Okay. And I'm also going to change, leave that as a plumb cut. If we change it to a two cut plumb, let's see if we could see it here. And let's cancel. Oh, you know what? We have this. 
let's go ahead and detach it. So if you ever want to undo it, you just use the detach. Let's see if that changed it. So let's go two cup plum. Nope. Let's see if we could do the other one. Nope. Can't make footprint. Yeah. So the flat roofs end up having a little bit, they're just a little bit, um, they have different constraints. Okay. So we're going to leave this just as is. And so that's how we would create just a regular 2% um, flat roof slope. I'm going to go ahead and delete this so we could explore kind of another issue. So I chose the longest side. So this is one continuous slope going upward. Well, what if you wanted it sloping the other direction, right? Like what if you wanted it coming off on this side? Let's go to roof. Um, we're going to hit define slope, extend to wall core. So you'd say, okay, well, I want to slope from there. And if it's sloping here, then that means it's also going to be sloping from on from this side. And then I would go ahead and click over here without the defined slope. This is going to be a mistake, by the way. So I'm just walking through the steps of a very common mistake um, so that you can see what the issues are. So I'll go ahead and hit the escape key twice. Let's go ahead and select both of these, and we're going to change this slope. I'm going to exaggerate. Actually, let's just leave it at 2%. I wanted to exaggerate it just so that we could really see it, but I also don't want to um, confuse you. So let's hit the check mark. So we have a roof slope, right? And now this time, it's sloping in the other direction. You go to that section. There it is. Right, sort of. Let's change this to a raptor so that we're getting the correct um, location. All right, so here's the problem. The problem is that, remember that the slope is taken from the wall. So it's taken from the inside core, right, or taken from the core um, at the point on the interior side. And it starts from here, and the 2% starts from here, and it goes up. But because of that jog, right, it also created, and the way we created that roof, it also created a 2% on this side. And that's why we have this one line, because it ended up creating two kind of separate roofs. Because this slope here started from this point. That's why it's touching at this point. And it's touching at this point. So because we told it, we gave it two separate slopes, then um, it gave us two kind of separate starting points, separate locations. Let's see if we could see it in 3D view. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense there. And let's orbit around. You see that jog? You see how this side, this portion of the roof is higher than this portion. That's because they're not, the angle, the slope isn't starting from the same location. The slope on this portion is starting farther back. So it's covering more distance and therefore it's sloping and angling longer and higher. This one, on the other hand, this portion here is pushed forward. And so it's starting at a lower point, right? So this is a problem. You do not want this, and this is not how it would be created. We want one continuous sloped surface without a jog. So let's go ahead and delete this. Let's go back to the section. I'm sorry, to the roof plan. Okay, we're gonna go to roof. Follow the same steps. Define slope, extend to wall core. Okay. But this time, actually, this time, I'm not going to define slope. We're going to define it in a different way. Okay. But I do need to create the boundary of the roof. So I'll go ahead and just kind of click around. Okay, so now I have a boundary. And instead of defining, defining the slope this way, we're going to hit this bottom 
we're going to come over here to the slope arrow. Now we covered the slope arrow in the previous lecture when covering or yeah, when covering the the, um, the ceiling. So we already have a general idea of how this works. But again, when it comes to the slope arrow, let's wait for the image. The tail of the arrow, okay, is um, the lower portion of the slope, and the actual top part of the arrow, the arrow itself, represents the height or the top part of the slope. So the tail represents the bottom of the slope. The top of the arrow represents the top of the slope. So that would mean that if we want it sloping from this wall going up, that means that I have to put the arrow there going up. Now the first click is always the tail of the arrow. And then the second click is the actual arrow itself. Okay, so now we have a slope arrow. I can go ahead and select it. So again, the tail is the bottom part of the slope. The head is the top part of the slope. I'm gonna select it. And instead of specifying the height, so we could specify the height of the tail and the height offset at the head. Okay, so that's the head. So we could say we want the height over here at this point and the height over here at this point. But instead, what I want is actually just the slope itself. So I'll change that to slope and then I'll change this to 2%. Nope. I feel like it didn't do that. Let's go ahead and select it again. What happened here? No. Yeah, it did change it. Okay, let me just do that one more time. I was busy looking at my keyboard and I'm not sure what happened. Will it apply? Okay. And that should have covered it. We'll hit the check mark. And look at that. I already know it did it correctly because we don't have a line right there. Let's go to the 3D view. Yep. And there we go. Okay. Now we could quickly go to the section and make sure that this is set to rafter. And then I would go to the 3D view and click on these walls. I could actually do a multiple selection. I could click on that wall right there. You know what? I think I can. Before I saying, let's make sure that this works. So then I'll hit attach top base. Yeah. And then the roof. And that did it. Okay. Oh, I do have to select that one. Attach top base and right there. So let's go to the section, and it looks like I'm missing a wall. So let's select it from the section and then go back to the 3D view. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Okay. So we have to select that one as well. So now let's go back to the section, and there we have it. We have a flat roof that's really not flat. That's at a 2% slope, and we have the walls going up um, to the bottom of the roof. So that's it. That's how we would go about creating the different um, roof tab. Yeah, the roof types. The roof command itself is pretty simple and, and straightforward. It's just a matter. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated when we're dealing with roofs, but we could use that slope arrow. And then it's just a matter of really learning and practicing. It really comes down to practicing um, how to really kind of communicate with Revit and let it know that, okay, I want to slope from here but not over here, right? And really kind of playing with that um, defined slope button, okay? So that's it. That's all I'm covering for the roof.